This is Rugby World Cup Daily. Come on, England! Welcome to Rugby World Cup Daily. Uh, don't panic, don't panic. It's episode 42. We're in Shibuya. And um, a lot of uh, deep thought went into my Renji outfit. Um, as you can see, Ren isn't here. I, G is flying solo for tonight. And um, well, speaking of great combinations like these two, Flatman, Gregan, and Smith, not this one, the other one, John, uh, gets us ready for the big final this weekend. Round one, Battle of the Breakdown. Mr. John Smith. The breakdown is going to be a tricky one for South Africa. Curry and uh, Underhill have been unbelievable in the last couple of weeks. Uh, what I think that they haven't experienced is the counter rucking ability of the likes of Peter Steph de Toy, Irvin Etzebeth, Amal Herber. So we don't have anyone that's dedicated to the breakdown like the two of them, and they're incredible at it. Will we win it first of the ball? I think they'll beat us every time. It'll be about what they can do with the pressure that comes off of that. And your response to that, Mr. Flatman? I think John's right. I think Peter Steph Dutoy is the most aggressive, destructive counter rucker in the whole tournament. But I think they'll deal with him because I think they're really focused on him. I also think Curry and Underhill are in great form and it helps them to have only Dutoy to worry about as opposed to Dutoy and Francois Lowe. For me, he's the best in the world over the ball. Mm -hmm. So I think England actually got off lightly in terms of breakdown. They've only got one big freak to think about. Some really strong cases, but I have to give this one to England. Here's where we are very strong. We want as many scrums and lineouts as possible, especially the scrums. The scrums will allow us to keep the ball in, get into Carl Sinclair just a little bit with BC and then Kitsov to come in later, almost like a Zert. Okay. Right at the end. Oh. Just keep the pressure like coming, sweet one keep like the ball sweet in finish. all the time, drain the energy. If we drain the energy, Curry and Andy Hill, they've got to oh, stop going to the, the breakdown because they're tired. Mm. Scrum, set piece, line out, South Africa, easy. That sounded delicious, Mr. Flatman. How, how, like, how, like, how do you counter that? I think England's set piece is outstanding. In the, in the semi final, the scrum is very good. The line out that was meant to struggle against New Zealand was dominant, it was slick, it was razor sharp. What I think when I look at the South African starting front row is that even if they don't dominate, I don't see how anybody dominates them. If England achieve parity, I think they'll be happy with that. I don't see them achieving dominance against the South African set piece. Beautiful arguments, but I, I do enjoy food. So when you talk about it with that passion, the winner is South Africa on that. Thank you, Mr. Riff. <laughs> the semi-final, they showed us a new version of English X Factor that we hadn't seen before and we didn't expect. So for me, if England can retain the ball and Peter Steph Dutoy and even Exabeth and France Malherba don't decimate the breakdown, I think there's a tempo there that actually is almost, almost Japanese in its intensity. I think no one lives with that. That was compelling. That had a little... So South Africa's X Factor, I think, is a little bit more complex than that. We first saw Nelson Mandela with Francois Pinar. That was incredible as a 17 year old. I didn't understand the, the, the difference we could make as a team until I got home with Tabo Mbeki, the president. Mm -hmm. But a black African captain for the first time lifting a trophy would change the way our country would operate. Logic tells me England, but my heart, I'm gonna give it to you. For that very reason, that was such a strong debate. You're representing more. Two, twirl into your outfit. Ta da! Yoshi and Yoshi's mate. Um, apparently, this is a really popular manga character, but I don't know exactly what her name is. Yeah, 
business camera in Tokyo, pretty low profile this picture. Absolutely phenomenal experience. What a great way to see Tokyo. Obviously, we also just hit the jackpot with the weather, but thank you to Brian Abana for the invite. He's just some guy, you know? So good. This is Disney level. I mean, this is so impressive. You're here. Oh. Speaking of impressive, um, Johnny Wilkinson is in town and, uh, well, we actually got some time with him. And so you can now also get to know him a bit better. Spider-Man, I just remember I always felt like he was a light-hearted superhero. The real one that marked me was probably sort of 1991. Before that, it was the Five Nations, that's all you pretty much watched. But now we had the, the big Southern Hemisphere teams and all these amazing players from places I'd never heard of. I had a xylophone. I could never play it, but it, I always remember it being in the cupboard. And every time I went to the cupboard, I got it out thinking that this time I'd nail it. I think it's still in the cupboard. At the moment, big into my avocado and beetroot, but not as a necessarily as a combo. That's a good question. I remember sort of Speed and Demolition Man, which was always Sandra Bullock films. Back in the day, I was single-mindedly devoted about rugby, which meant when I wasn't playing rugby, I was single-mindedly absent from whatever else I was doing. On the field, it, it was definitely a strength. I think it was you 2 Joshua Tree. Two guys, probably Phil Greeny and Austin Healy. If you needed some sort of light-hearted entertainment, then that was the place to go. So long, and thanks for the fish. This has been Rugby World Cup Daily from the chaos that is Shibuya Crossing on Halloween. Tomorrow we will be back and getting you ready for the final, but make sure you don't miss the bronze final between Wales and New Zealand today. Yeah. <laughs>